I'm Amy Youngs, and I'm an artist and faculty member in the Department of Art. I create new media, ecosystem artworks, with the goal of increasing visibility and conversations around things that matter. I'm going to tell you about Biopresence, a participatory campus-wide project I'm involved with. It serves as an example of how artists can work together with others to bring attention to things that might otherwise go unnoticed. As campus changes, grows, and becomes more populated, how can we create a sense of place here? And how can we involve others on campus in that process? I teamed up with artists, writers, and scientists who care about issues of biodiversity, and we came up with a multi-part plan designed to help us all notice, document, and consider the non-human animals that we share our space with. It starts with the use of the hashtag AnimalOSU. We are encouraging everyone to notice animals on campus, alive or dead. Then post photos, videos, or stories about them on social media with the hashtag. This allows us and everyone else online to know about the animals observed on campus. It is like a giant distributed webcam. The idea is to invite the entire campus community to participate in the process of making animals visible. I'll let some of the other faculty and staff involved in the project tell you more. The OSU campus is kind of a microcosm for social issues that are facing us in the 21st century all over the world. Um, as the human uh, impact and, and footprint increases all over the world, animals uh, are not just out there in, in wilderness areas and uh, not just confined into, into uh, um, domesticated spaces, but, but um, there are a lot of them that, that uh, live around, in and around us without necessarily wanting to be um, interacting with us in a uh, uh, controlled fashion. Um, and I think that's going to be an issue for um, any kind of city that, that is interested in being uh, ecologically attuned. Um, and that's what we're, I hope, trying to model and think about is how uh, 21st century citizens can um, be sociable with other than human animals. If we want to take bi the biodiversity protection seriously, uh, we need to figure out ways in which humans and human society can, can get its needs met at the same time as uh, we minimize the, the ultimate impact on a wide variety of other species. So that's again, a, a, it's a sustainability challenge for the for the 21st century and something that I think is, is uh, pretty urgent. In spring, I teach a class in uh, ornithology, or it's called Ohio Birds now. And during that class, I think the best part is that students actually get to go outside. And we go out and, and find some birds and watch birds. And what I've noticed is that some really good places for bird watching are right on OSU campus. There are some really nice areas where there's a lot of trees, so obviously for birds the habitat has to be right so that uh, a lot of birds can actually uh, stop over there on migration. So what we've found is that unfortunately there are also some birds actually on OSU campus that, that hit windows and that students then have been finding and that they actually bring into the Museum of Biological Diversity because we also we have a big tetrapod collection where we, where we have mainly birds but then also uh, some, some other animals with four limbs. And, and then we actually we prepare these birds into study specimens. As the curator of, of a sound lab is raising awareness of the sounds around us and how, for example, environmental noise can actually impact uh, bird songs and, and, and also affects the animals that, that they kind of have to, to change their singing patterns, for example. So what we've been doing is actually put up a, a song meter at the OSU wetlands to kind of monitor passively what birds are vocalizing, especially in the morning. That's usually when, when birds are really active and when they're singing, because after a night where they were silent, they kind of have to reclaim the territories, tell everybody that they're still there, that this is their space and they, they defend it. I think the thing that was really uh, sort of inspiring to me was, um, could, we, could I be walking across campus and um, thinking about this program uh, 
pull up the web page, look at it, and see that, um, hey, there's a bunch of foxes that uh, appear behind that um, building right there that I never would have known were there. Or, um, I mean, everybody's got cameras in their pocket now that can, you know, take pictures. Um, what other places might we want to put cameras, or what other cameras um, might already be on campus that people might be seeing animals through? And obviously the uh, campus security would be one of the, the main um, sources of these cameras. So, uh, yeah. Not sure if it was thousands of cameras, but at least hundreds of cameras all over the place that um, obviously cannot be watching, watched or recording all the time, but rather that can be accessed. So it, it's not so much that um, it can pull up video of animals as I had hoped, but that uh, you end up with these chance sightings of animals and um, trends around campus. The project's been crowdsourcing. Um, people have been posting um, photos of animals to social media. Um, so we're looking at um, what are different ways of being able to download um, and show that information to people, um, either on a map that they're looking at on uh, their computers or mobile devices, or um, Ideally, when they're walking around campus, being able to see uh, things like what's the closest animal photo to me where I am right now. I'm interested in uh, interactive art and robotics, and in particular making interactive art for animals and for humans. And uh, one of the pieces, for example, that uh, has uh, gotten me quite a bit of attention is a robot that is actually controlled by a living fish. So I developed an interface for a living fish to move its robot around to explore uh, outside the limits of its tank. So I created this project called the Telepistemological Demi, and of course there's epistemology, and telepistemology is how we know what we know at a distance, using things like telephony and cameras and telescopes. And So what the students did was they first had to conceptualize, imagine an animal they wanted to capture, and then 3D model and design something, learn 3D modeling, but then they had to rapid prototype it and actually use it in the field. And that was very exciting for, for me to watch them actually implement their designs out in the field. I, I think the students are learning to uh, look at others, to look at animal, to understand that there are a lot of animals around campus, but especially urban animals, and that we coexist with them, that they're wonderful species to look at and exciting to explore. So I think it's helping the students to look outside of self and to understand the other on campus that coexists, coexists with us.